The world is changing fast. All sectors of society are in flux, with rivers of new information greeting us daily and new technologies we could not have dreamed of a few years ago enriching our lives. But to ensure a continued better tomorrow for humankind, we also need to look back on human history and use the insights we gain from it as we build our future. Historical records are invaluable in this process, containing knowledge and wisdom accumulated over time and vital information about our past. But over the centuries, these precious records are frequently destroyed or damaged, whether by natural disasters, poor management, or intentional destruction. UNESCO started the Memory of the World program in 1992 to safeguard the world's invaluable documentary heritage and make the crucial information and memories it contains available to all humankind. Since then, a wide variety of documentary heritage in all forms and styles on a huge range of topics has been inscribed on the International Register of the Memory of the World. Examples include a 15th century document called the Hunmin Jungum Manuscript, which originally introduced the Korean alphabet to Korea's population, Germany's Gutenberg Bible, documents in the United Kingdom and the United States of America relating to the life of William Shakespeare, records related to the nuclear accident at Chernobyl in Ukraine, and the diaries of Anne Frank in the Netherlands. To date, a total of 432 items of documentary heritage have been nominated by 124 countries and eight organizations and inscribed in the International Register of the Memory of the World. Currently, the 10 countries with the greatest number of inscriptions are Germany, the United Kingdom, Poland, the Republic of Korea, the Netherlands, Austria, Russia, China, France, and Mexico. Since 2009, the Korean National Commission for UNESCO, supported by the Cultural Heritage Administration of the Republic of Korea, has organized an annual UNESCO Memory of the World training workshop to help fellow UNESCO member states to identify their documentary heritage and nominate it to be recognized and added to the MOW International Register. The workshop is aimed at member states that have not yet registered any documentary heritage or have only a small number of items inscribed on the register. So far, workshops have been held for countries in Asia, the Pacific, Africa, Latin America, the Caribbean, and the Arab region. As part of the workshops, KNCU connects participants with experts on the Memory of the World program who provide essential, practical advice on how to identify valuable documents and how to complete the forms required to nominate documentary heritage for the Memory of the World, including how to describe the documents effectively in accordance with the selection criteria for inscription. This practical advice can help to enhance the nominations dramatically. The UNESCO MOW Training Workshop consists of a mixture of lectures and practical hands-on training. It aims to give participants a good understanding of how the MOW program works, as well as practical advice directly conductive to supporting successful inscriptions on the MOW International or Regional Register. It includes an overview of the UNESCO MOW program, the introduction to the MOW General Guidelines and Register Companion, and opportunities for direct consultation with international experts on the MOW program who review participants' draft nomination forms and offer advice as the participants undertake practical work to revise and supplement their nominations. The very first workshop was held in Icheon in the Republic of Korea in 2009. Since then, the workshops have been held in a variety of countries and regions. In 2011, the workshop was held in Jakarta, Indonesia, attended by 10 countries from Asia and the Pacific region. The workshop led to two successful nominations to the International Register and one to the Regional Register. In 2012, training workshop took place in Adidas Ababa, Ethiopia, 
attended by eight countries from the African region and resulted in two successful nominations to the International Register. In 2013, Training Workshop was attended by eight countries from Asia and the Pacific region and was held in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. It resulted in six successful nominations to the Regional Register. In 2014, the workshop was held in Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan for several countries from Asia and the Pacific, while in 2015, the training workshop was held in Kingston, Jamaica for 12 countries from Latin America and the Caribbean. The 2015 workshop resulted in three successful nominations to the International Register and one to the Regional Register. The 2016 training workshop for 10 countries in the Asia-Pacific was held in Suva and Fiji, and the 2017 workshop was held in Windhoek, Namibia, with participants from nine countries in Africa. In 2018, the workshop was held in Seoul in the Republic of Korea for seven countries from Asia and the Pacific, while the 2019 training workshop was attended by seven countries from the Arab region and was held in St. Paul's Bay, Malta. The 2020 and 2021 training workshops were held online as a result of the global pandemic with participants from around the world. A total of 12 workshops have been held so far, with 106 countries participating, resulting in 10 successful inscriptions so far on the International Register and 11 on the Regional Registers of the UNESCO Memory of the World Program. In recent years, the nominations process for the MOW program was paused for around four years while the program underwent a comprehensive review. But in 2021, UNESCO has resumed calls for nominations, and we expect that many member states who participated in previous training workshops will be successful in having their documentary heritage inscribed in the MOW register using the nomination files they improved during the workshops. I'd like to start by congratulating the Korean National Commission for UNESCO for 12 years of annual Memory of the World training workshops. I think it was a brilliant idea to start organizing these workshops. I've had a great pleasure of participating in many of them, and I can say that the preparations, the facilities, the daily programs and excursions, and the professional and friendly support by KSU staff have really always been excellent. Um, we're seeing the results coming through from uh, your workshops in the last couple of years, even though we've been unable to meet in person. And it's been, um, I think, us, it's going to be very successful. It's been one of the wonderful things, of course, about um, the workshops has been the fact that we could mix with people from around the world. This class assisted us in having our documentary heritage inscribed on the register. An extensive knowledge of uh, experts helped me to improve our uh, nomination form a lot. Um, I would like to encourage more people to participate in this workshop in the future in order to develop and, and develop their good nominations, already good nominations, but many of the nominations, so when they were submitted to the workshop, were not fully developed, but through by discussing many points in the nomination with the international experts, there are many, many chances are given that their nominations can be developed, polished, and even sometimes restructured into a very convincing uh, nomination. So our nomination was successful due to the assistance that uh, the KNCU provided us through their um, workshops that we attended. Workshops have been revelatory for the experts. I think it made us think um, in preparing our presentations and we were introduced to some extraordinary items of documentary heritage that we never knew existed. Uh, it's expanded our understanding of what um, a document is well beyond the traditional image of something on paper. 
and uh, it's been a reminder of the extraordinary fragility and vulnerability of heritage as political and social conditions change. So that we have to thank you for UNESCO, uh, Korea, community, uh, for two, uh, this workshop for training. I thank you very much for Laos. Thank you. Most obvious sign of benefit from these workshops is the still small but clear change of balance on the International Register. In 2009, the International Register was extremely lopsided with European inscriptions representing more than 50% of the total. Since then, we have seen an increase in nominations from different parts of the world, especially Asia, which is now the second region after Europe that despite our cultural, linguistic, or even political differences, when we work together, we better understand our common humanity. The goals of the UNESCO MoW program are to raise awareness of documentary heritage, to encourage UNESCO member states to identify and protect this precious documentary heritage of all humankind, in whatever form and from whatever origin, and to increase access to these records so that they are available to present and future generations everywhere. The goal of the MOW training workshop is to help realize these objectives by helping UNESCO member states that have yet to register much or any documentary heritage to make successful nominations to the memory of the world registers. Humans make records, and records make history. Generations of humans may disappear, but records help their thoughts and memories to live on intact to benefit future generations. UNESCO's primary goals are the achievement of peace and sustainable development on a global basis. The Memory of the World program contributes to these goals by encouraging us all to learn from humanity's past in whatever part of the world it happened and offering us the records of the past to do so. The MOW Training Workshop works together with UNESCO member states to ensure that they can participate in the MOW program effectively to increase awareness and protection of documentary heritage across regional and cultural boundaries, so that these priceless documents, enablers of modern human development, remain intact and accessible for generations to come.